Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, good morning, everyone on Zoom. I see there are two Charles Lewis's on the uh, on the on Zoom. <laughs> so good morning, Charles. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, everyone else on on Zoom. Uh, nice to have you all today here. It's nice to see Patricia with us today. Is anyone else uh, visiting us? I don't think there's anyone else. That's, uh, announcement it says that uh, you guess um, general service will be here at, at the church um, two weeks from yesterday on the December 2nd and, uh, after the service there will be uh, refreshments in Peter Hall so we have a couple here visiting on the 16th. Um, after the concert, we're having the, the annual Christmas dinner at 4.30. Please confirm your attendance. Okay. Uh, for more information, you can see Gloria, Charlene, Beverly, and Wanda. Please do not forget to add the information for the on the contact list. If you'd like to be on our phone list, um, it's very helpful, especially for the leaders in the church to to, uh, if you're coming and uh, we want to contact you, you know, just to see how you're doing or whatever, and if we don't have your phone number, it's, it makes it uh, very difficult for us. So we appreciate that. Um, I've been asked to, uh, to, to mention that um, there was a deacons meeting yesterday, and uh, it was uh, the, the deacons, as deacons, we want to uh, prepare some Christmas baskets. And so we're asking if you could uh, bring, I know you could, some of you are bringing things for the, for the pantry, but if you could bring even more for this, uh, non-perishable things so that we can prepare some baskets and give to those who are, are in need. So this would be greatly appreciated. And uh, if we continue, um, uh, Debbie has asked, or if we continue to pray, they're not able, Debbie and Charles are not able to be here today because Debbie is not feeling well. Um, but uh, asked if we could just continue to pray for her health and uh, and for strength also. And uh, when Roger does the family prayer, as he so graciously agreed to do, uh, if he can mention that in the family prayer. Okay, yeah, Roger. Thank you. So I'm just going to open in prayer, and then we're going to begin. Lord, we just uh, give you praise as we're, we stand before you this morning. And uh, we just uh, honor, Lord, that uh, to be in your presence. said in his word, he says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And uh, 
if you have life in, the, in you today, you're able to stand up, right? Amen. You're going to be able to stand up, and uh, we're going to sing the first song, Wonderful Words of Life.
keep going, keep going, keep going.
stir your hearts to, to worship. Amen. Roger, if you would come and uh, lead us in a family prayer.
pray for your blessing upon them and blessing upon uh, Marisol, Lord. We thank you and we give you praise for you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for bringing each and every one of us here today, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you may bless this service, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit be with us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we open your head to hear your word and our hearts to receive it, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for the ones who are going through hardship at this time, Lord. There are so many, so many of us that need to hear your word, Lord. And Heavenly Father, this time, Lord, I lift up uh, Charles and Debbie, Lord, especially Debbie, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, it is your will, Lord, that you may put your hands upon them, Lord, Lord, for healing, Heavenly Father. And if it's not your will, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, to be comfort, Lord, this time. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you may give Charles the strength, Lord, and that energy, Lord, knowing that you would him, Lord, so that he can stand that aside to see you, O oh Lord Jesus, for whatever will that you have for all. Lord. We pray for all the other ones who are going to uh, who are sick, Lord. We pray for Calvin. We pray for uh, Norva, Heavenly Father. We pray for Noriah, Doriah, and Luke, Lord. We pray for all the ones who are living alone, Lord, like Blossom. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for them, Lord. And the ones who are in the call, Lord, you know them by name, you know them by gender, Lord, Heavenly Father. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you put your hands upon them and they will not take their eyes away from you, but knowing that, Lord, you will not give them more than they can bear, but you will be them, Lord, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, as we are about to hear your word, Lord, we pray that you may, you may fill Pastor Ray with the Spirit, Lord, that you may bring us the word, Lord, your word, your word, and your word. After this service, Lord, we may know who you are and be closer to you. And we may go up, not just here in the world, but do us up here, Lord, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we pray in your name, Lord. We pray, we call upon you, Jesus, that you may bring us a pastor, Lord, Heavenly Father, as we seek one, Lord. We pray, bring us a pastor that will bring your word to us, Lord. Your word, Lord, Heavenly Father, and your children, your word, and your word only, Lord. Heavenly Father, as we are about to, to hear your word again, I Thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy, and we pray that you will be with us, Lord. I pray all this in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, name. Amen. 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 My brother Roger, in reference to what you said before you prayed, uh, you know, my Bible says that the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It doesn't say that the prayer, a long prayer availeth much. It says a righteous man availeth much. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Wanda, you would come and uh, lead us in the scripture reading. Number 6, 22 to 27. Hi, Zoom. Sir. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. May the Lord bless them. Oh, good morning. 
morning, everybody. Before I start the sermon, I just would like to open a parenthesis concerning the Christmas baskets. Uh, everywhere I've been, we've always made Christmas baskets, and it's very, very important. It's important for those who uh, may not be as wealthy as we are. Uh, I, re I remember once when I was pastor at Bethel Baptist Church in the San Ana, Donna and I, uh, we brought a Christmas basket to an unknown family that somebody said, well, that family needs. So uh, we have our baskets, you know, uh, and, and the little boy is about five or six, <coughs> opens the door. And this is what he said. He said, Mama, it's Jesus. <laughs> and you know what? That's probably the best compliment I ever had in my life. You know, somebody looking at me and thinking that I'm Jesus. And everybody that looks at a child of God should be able to say that person looks like Jesus. So I encourage you strongly, please, take time. And sometimes, you know, People take this occasion to, let's say, clean out their uh, their uh, pantries, and they would bring, you know, dry goods, and we would make the baskets, and we would look at the cans, and they were three years old already, overdue. We don't want that, right? You know, God has been gracious, God has been good, God has been merciful unto us, so let's be good unto others. So Donna and I, we're going to bring stuff. And I hope you're going to bring stuff. And I hope that the Christmas baskets we're going to make are going to be wonderful for the people that will receive them. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, well, that's done. I won't be here next week. It's my last time that I won't be here. I'm giving one more Sunday help to Midfield Baptist uh, Church. So I hope next week somebody will remind somebody to talk about the Christmas baskets. Now, by a show of hands, just by a show of hands, who here would like, who here would like to be blessed by God? Raise your hand. Hey, I see a two-hander. I see two, two. Amen. Amen. So I think it's, you can put it down again. Thank you very much. I think it's unanimous, right? We all want God's blessing. We all want the hand of God to be upon us. We all want God's favor. And you know what? God's favor is always, always by grace. Because between you and me, God doesn't owe us anything, right? So anything that we have, anything that He gives us is by His grace, His own free will. But the Bible also tells us that if you truly are a child of God, you can be blessed if you act a certain way. Now that's easy to understand. All of us who have children, right? A lot of us here have had children. Now we all love our children, right? Most of the time. We all love our children, right? <clears throat> but sometimes, they do things that we really don't like. And we don't feel like blessing them. We feel like... <clears throat> if you know what I mean. I'm exaggerating, but just to show a point. That there are times where the Bible tells us specifically that if we act a certain way, we will receive God's blessing. Now, since all of us, we raised our hands and some of, of us double raised it, I think all of our ears, right, should be attentive to find out what can I do? What can I do to receive the blessings of God? So we're, this morning, I hope you have your uh, handouts. And we're going to look at seven ways, there are more, but seven ways where we can be blessed by God. So the first one is this one. We can be blessed by where you are. Did you know that God can bless you depending on where you are? And our verse is Psalm 84, verse 4. So please turn to Psalm 84, verse 4. And we will see what the Word of God tells us. <coughs> Psalm 84, verse 4 says this. Blessed are those. Okay, so blessed are those. There's a blessing for those who dwell in your house. Oh, wow. There's a special blessing for those who dwell in the house of God. Now, we don't have the temple of God anymore. We're not in Jerusalem. It's been destroyed twice. But we are in what we call the house of God. We are gathered under the name of God. So there's a special blessing when the children of God gather together in His house like we are. And that's understandable. I'm blessed with the songs. I hope you are. I'm blessed when 
a brother or a sister says, Hi, Ray, how was your week? I'm blessed when somebody wants to pray for me. We can bless each other. We can receive blessings just by the fact that we are here together. So the verse says, Psalm 84, verse 4, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. So if I'm bright, if I'm smart a little bit, I will want to be in the house of God as often as I can. Because that's where I will be poured by your blessings and also the blessings of God. And it's written, they still, they will still be praising you. So I come to the house of God, I receive blessings, and what do, the, what do I do? I praise God, I thank God. So it's a circle. I am being blessed, people are blessed by blessing, I praise God, God is blessed, and so forth. So it's wonderful. So the first thing I need to remember, Lord, I want to be blessed. And what should I do? I should be in His house. Unfortunately, I'm talking in general here, unfortunately there's a lot of Christians that come to the house of God if they don't have anything else to do. Yeah. If I don't have anything else to do. Ah. Uh. That's not the way you ought to do it, my friends. In your calendar, you block off Sundays. That's it. That's all. Oh, let's go here. Let's go there. Let's do that. Sorry. I'm at the house of the Lord to praise and bless Him and to receive blessings. Amen. A second way that I can be blessed, that all of us, if you are truly a child of God, you can be blessed. Blessed by being just. If you're taking notes, blessed by being just to others. And our verse is Psalm 106, Psalm 106, verse 3. So please turn to Psalm 106, verse 3. Where it is written, Blessed are those, again, it's a blessing, it's a promise, blessed are those who what? Who keep justice. God says, Ray, I will bless you if you are just in your relationship with others. Now being just, what does it mean? One of the things is that I don't take advantage of other people. Some people are like that. They see somebody who's, uh, you know, there are people that are kind-hearted, they're open-handed, and they're ready to help anybody else, and people sometimes take advantage. But God says, Ray, there is a blessing for you if you keep justice, if in your life you are just with the way that you have your life with other people. What right is right, what is not right is not right. You don't have favoritism. You're just with everybody. And then it's written, and he who does righteousness at all times. Now the word righteousness gives the idea of being straight. I'm being straight with people. I don't act like, eh, like that with somebody, uh, with somebody else. I am right. And when that person, whoever it is, it should be, it should be, or, well, we are to act right with that person. God says, you know, what right is right, what is wrong is wrong. So let us be just with other people. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. Being just is giving to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Caesar, I'm talking about our friends, our neighbors, people at work, people at the metro, at the pharmacy, or anywhere else. And he who does righteousness at all times. So let's walk straight. You know, sometimes people can be crooked a little bit in their affairs with people. Sometimes a little bit like this with that person, and sometimes a little bit like that with, with that person. So you don't walk straight. So I can be blessed. First of all, I can be blessed depending on where I am. If I'm in the house of the Lord, I will receive blessings. Second of all, I will be blessed, God promises, if I am just with Others, if I'm not two-faced, something like that with you and something like that with somebody else. A third way, are you still interested to know how to get blessed? Yes. Amen. That wasn't a big yes. Are you still interested in being blessed by God? Yes. Amen, yes. So the third way is blessed by your walk in life. Blessed by your walk in life. And this time we are going to look up Psalm 119, verse 1. Now, Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in all the Bible. What, 173 verses, 170-something? 
So this is the opening. Psalm 119, verse 1. How can I be blessed? Well, God says this. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. So I will receive a blessing from God when I don't walk in an undefiled way. Undefiled gives the idea of uh, impurity. You know, you let's imagine you're at a restaurant and you're having the daily soup with a, a submarine, let's say. So the waitress or the waiter comes, gives you the soup, and uh, you look at the soup and there's a bug in the soup, you know? So the soup is what? It's defiled. It's not pure anymore. So you call the waiter and you say, I'm sorry. I know meat costs a lot, but uh, I don't want the fly in, in, my, uh, in my soup, but I have another one. God says when your life is undefiled, so when your life is pure, when your thoughts are pure, when your actions are pure, when your relationship with other people, they are pure, you will receive a blessing. So that means I must look at my brothers and my sisters and the people around me with good thoughts, with happy thoughts towards them. Now you know I'm going to get her because she's going to, and him, boy, is he going to get her because we're just waiting. We're, we're, no, no, that's a defiled way. We need to walk pure before God and also pure before the people around us and we will be blessed. And here it's written also, who walk in the law of the Lord. <coughs> that's easy to understand. Just like with a parent. If a parent says, hey Ray, don't go there. Don't hang out with those boys. And uh, she finds out you arrive at 3 o'clock in the morning and you've been hanging around with that gang again. She won't be happy and she won't bless you. Well, she might bless you with her hand, right? I remember my mom. I think I told you this. I remember my mom, you know, when I was 15, you know, 16, 14. Sometimes I would arrive real late, like at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I would be like a drunk person, you know, like, you open the door slowly, you know, they take off their shoes. And they don't want their wife to hear her, you know. And I would be doing that. I didn't want mom or dad to, to wake up because it's 2 o'clock. And then I would pass right in front of the living room and then click. She'd put on the light. <laughs> I was caught. But she didn't have to say a word because she was crying. You know. <laughs> she didn't need to say anything. I got, I got the message and click. She would put the lights off and go in her room. Well, you know, we need to walk in the law of the Lord. When God says, don't do this, we don't do it. I cannot imagine to receive a blessing from God if willingly, knowingly, I go straight against His will. You know, I have known women uh, and guys, but mostly women because uh, a lot of them want to get married. They want to get married. I've seen women in their 50s wanting to get married, not waiting on the right man, and having a terrible life. Two, three years down the road, it's finished. It's finished. Why? Because they got married with somebody who wasn't really saved, or the person was saved but wasn't a good Christian. So instead of waiting upon the Lord, they do what they want. They walk against the will of God, and they don't get blessed. It's just natural. So first of all, I'm blessed by where I am. If I'm in the house of God, I'll receive blessings. Second of all, I'll be blessed if I am just with others. Third of all, I'll be blessed if I walk straight, if I'm undefiled before God. Fourth way that I can be blessed is by seeking the Lord. If you're taking notes, seeking the Lord. And here we're still in Psalm 119, but verse 2. Psalm 119, but verse 2. It's written, Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. Now, we already have seen in Psalm 119, verse 1, about keeping the law, walking in the law of God. Now, there's another aspect. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you if I seek you if you seek me, sorry, with your whole heart. Now, do you remember Jesus told two parables? Told many, he told 40 parables. So out of them, there was one that uh, talks about uh, a man who goes to the market and uh, he finds a, a pearl of great price. 
doesn't have the money to buy it. So he sells everything he has to buy that great pearl, that beautiful pearl. It's his. Do you remember? And then he talked about the man who was walking in the field, who finds a treasure. Oh boy. So he, he sells everything he has to buy the land to have the treasure. These two people were seeking that. That was so precious for them that they decided to give all that they had to abandon all for that. Now it's a bit like that with this. When I seek God, I don't seek Him once a week during an hour and a half. That's not seeking. Once my son Luke, I was working at the Pelagiosis. This was in the early 80s. Uh, I was working at the Pelagiosis, but I was taking care of a brethren church. And I get a phone call at work. Pelagiosis in Valitio. Rates for you. Okay, I pick up the phone. And it was my wife, and she said, uh, I can't find Luke. Has it ever happened to you that suddenly your, your child is, is lost? I can't find him. I have no idea where he is. He's about two and a half years old. And your heart goes like that. I stop everything. Shall I have to go? To I get in my car. I go. I head home. I pray. I pray. I pray. And uh, my wife had told the, the certain people in the village, because we lived in the Via a very small village, and there's a river there. Mm -hmm. So people were looking around this and that and trying to find little Luke and uh, couldn't find him, couldn't find him. Then I, I said, did you go see the neighbor? She says, I knocked and there was no answer. So I went there, I knocked, no answer. <coughs> but we're in the village, the door, no, I opened the door. <coughs> and when I opened the door, I see his little pair of boots there. <laughs> Luke had a friend who was his neighbor. He decided to go see his neighbor. His neighbor wasn't there. So he went upstairs in his room and he was playing with his toys, you know. <laughs> so what do you do? Look, he comes down. You have these mixed feelings, eh? You're so happy that you found him, but you want to kill him, you know? <laughs> you know? It's true, eh, parents? It's true sometimes. So I, we were really seeking Luc, you know? That's the really seeking him. Do we really seek God in our lives? Or do we just come to church, you know, or spend an hour, an hour and a half, say hi to buddies, and then that's it. There's a special blessing for all of you who individually really seek God. Through your prayers, through your reading, through your Bible study, through what you do in life. Do you wake up in the morning and you say, Lord, you know, I'm your servant. Open the door so I can honor and bless your name, so I can talk to people about your grace and so forth. If you seek God, really seek Him, you'll be blessed. A fifth way that I can be blessed by God is blessed because we wait. We wait upon the Lord. And we are in Isaiah 30, verse 18. We wait upon the Lord. And in this verse, we'll see that God waits and that people ought to wait. It's not just people. God waits also. And listen to the verse, Isaiah 30, verse 18. It's written, therefore, the Lord will wait. Ah, so God is waiting. He's waiting to do what? Well, it's written here that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of justice. So he's waiting. He's waiting to be gracious to you. He's waiting also to have mercy given to you. And he's waiting to bring justice to you. So he's waiting. He's waiting to do that. I believe he's waiting to do that for all of his children. And if you have repented of your sins, if you have come to the cross, if you have cried out to Christ to be your Savior and truly given your life, asking him to save you, you have been saved. So God is waiting to do these three things. To be gracious, to have mercy, give mercy, and to give justice. He's waiting to do that. And then it's written, Blessed are all those who wait for Him. So on one side, God is waiting to give you all these things. On the other side, what must we do? We must wait to receive Him. Well, not Him, but to receive the things that He wants to give us. Too often, too often, we act too fast in Christian living. And because of that, we receive what we want to have. But we don't receive the best. 
We don't receive what God wants us to have. When I was a missionary, I never bought a car in my life. I could have said, hey, I need a car, uh, let's uh, borrow a lot of money, blah, 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 blah. No, I prayed to God. You know what happened? God provided cars. God provided cars. God provided free cars. People, you know, I am not lying. Once we had three cars and we could only use one at a time. I had two ahead of time. People gave me cars. People gave me a, a whole bunch of stuff. And I truly believe that you might be right now spending a lot of money for nothing simply because you want it now and you want it in your terms. I remember once, I can't remember this, I got lots of, I'm an old man, so I got lots of stories. We always had big boats, you know, like a, a Newports and the Chryslers and big Buicks. And that one, you know, because we had a lot of kids, so they would all fit in the, the big old cars. So once I said, oh Lord, in my prayers, so I was praying, I like to have a small sport car just for fun, you know, just to make a change instead of, uh, you know, driving an old car. One day, I get a phone call from my dad. Now, he lives near Quebec City. He was alive in those days. And he says, hey, Manan. I said, oui, because he's French. And he said, you know what? I have a friend who's, uh, who works next to me, and uh, he's taking his retirement, and he bought himself a Cadillac. Now, he has a car to give away. It's a small car. It's a small sports car. And his son, who's in university, doesn't want it. He asked me, do I know anybody to whom he can give it to? <laughs> yes! Yes! So I ended up with a, oh, look, it's a Chevy, it's a Chevy little thing. And, but it was especially ordered, and instead of having a four-cylinder hat and eight-cylinder motor in it, the thing was so fast, so crazy, it was unbelievable. <laughs> I was so happy. But you know what? I put in prayer. I waited. And when God's time came, <laughs> He gave it. So be, be, be careful in life. Be careful. You might have desires. And maybe they're very legitimate desires. But don't go faster than God. You'll regret it. Don't go faster than God. Okay, so this is the sixth way that I can be blessed by God. Blessed because you are mocked. Blessed because you are mocked as a Christian or because you are a Christian. Now this is like a flip side. There's a special blessing upon us when we suffer in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are in 1 Peter, the 4th chapter, verses 14. 1 Peter, 4th chapter, verse 14. I believe the references are already written on. Yes, they're already written. Okay. And this is what this verse says. Peter writes, If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. So the apostle Peter is saying, he's writing to people who were dispersed in the Roman Empire. Uh, the Romans didn't like Christians because uh, during their time, you would have to offer an offering to Caesar once a year. You had to bow down before him. If you didn't do that, you know, so a lot were all over the place fleeing. So they were very, very persecuted. Did you know that the, during the early Christian times in, in the Roman Empire, they passed a law? And the law says sometimes, like if you put clear on somebody that is a Christian, we will give you their property. How easy it would be for, for me to say, uh, hey, uh, Julius, I'm exaggerating. Hey, Julius, uh, my neighbor, uh, he's a Christian. Okay, they go, they pick them up. That's it, that's all his house and his property are yours. Wow. So they really lived in difficult times. So Peter says, you know, when you're persecuted because you belong to Christ, when you're persecuted because God is your, your, your heavenly Father, well, you are blessed. Well, how can I be blessed if I'm persecuted? Well, it's simple. It's because our inheritance, what God will give us, because we were um, reproached because of the name of his son will be great. Okay? 
we are told to uh, look towards heaven and in heaven our inheritance uh, is there and so forth and it'll never rot away nobody can steal it and so so forth so i will be blessed don't don't try to be a christian a closet christian you know i act like everybody else so at work and with my friends, nobody knows I'm a Christian, so I won't be, you know, pushed aside or laughed at or mocked or, or whatever. But on Sunday, come out of the closet with my Sunday best, and I go to church, don't be a, Christ, a closet Christian. Live your Christian life. And you know what? Leave the rest to God. Now, I'll give you another story. When I was working at the Parish System of Montreal, I was really crazy, really, really crazy. Uh, I wasn't such a, a good employee, but then I became a Christian, and my life changed like that. For me, it was like that. My life changed like that, and I started to really work, <laughs> and to work nice, and to properly work, and, and, and so forth. So what happened is that the, my boss, who was the head of three departments, he was shipped in another department for a special project. So there were 20-some employees there, they needed somebody to head three departments. Who did they choose? They chose me. Did I ask for it? No. But they, they saw in me, and they knew I was a Christian. I have a big mouth, you know? So they knew that I was a Christian, but they say, we want that guy. So, brothers and sisters, don't be a closet Christian. And if people laugh at you, so what? There's an old saying that says, he who laughs last, laughs best. And God has the final word, right? God has the final word. So, the seventh way that I can be blessed, and again, there are so many ways. This time it's blessed by keeping the word of God. Now in Luke 11, verse 28, Luke 11, verse 28, there's two things that are mentioned here. And I want to stress on the second thing. It's written, but he said, more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God. That's easy, right? Right now you're hearing the word of God. So there's a blessing when you hear the word of God. But, there's a but here. And keep it. Blessed who hear and keep it. Now, my mother, she wore the pants in the family, as a lot of French women from those days. And when it was time to do discipline, she was the one. Hey, and I put the label. You knew, you know, she's going to give you a sermon. I wasn't a Christian. She wasn't a Christian. Blah, blah. And she would say, and would go, I heard it. I heard it. Did I keep it? No. Were you like me when you were young? Sometimes mom and dad said something, and you said, it went right through you. You didn't keep what they said. We can be just like that as children of God, brothers and sisters. We can hear the word of God, sit here, hear it, nod, take notes. You walk out of here, like I walk out of here, and you know, the notes, they're in your pocket, and uh, or your purse, and that's the end of it. But there's a special blessing, not only for those who hear the word of God, but for those who say, wait a minute, well, it goes in, and it stops, and it goes to your heart instead of going out your ear. God will bless you when you do that. So brothers and sisters, here are seven ways. Here are seven ways. The first way I can be blessed by God is by where I am. Where are you on Sunday? Are you with God's people? Are you under His authority, under His name? Second of all, blessed by being just to others. Am I a just person to other people? Third of all, I'm blessed by my walk in life. Do I follow what I know God wants me to do? Not what I think, not what I think that God wants me to do, but what I know, what's written in His Word. You know, Donna in the garage, she has a, a little, uh, it's like a poster, but it's made out of wood. And it's so funny, but it's so true. It's written on that little piece of wood. Don't believe everything you think. Isn't that, isn't that good, eh? Don't believe everything you think because a lot of our thoughts, they're no good at all. Fourth way is blessed by seeking the Lord, searching for Him like a precious jewel. Remember that song? 
Five, blessed because we wait, we allow the Lord to pour His blessings on us when He desires. Six, we're blessed because uh, the moments that we are mocked because we are under His name. And seven, blessed by keeping, keeping, not just hearing, keeping the words of God. So once again, who here wants to be blessed by God? Raise your hand. Just, just raise your hand. Okay. Amen. So now you know what to do. Let's end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace. We know, we know that all of your blessings, and we receive so many without even knowing it, all of your blessings are by your grace. They are unmerited. But as a child, we also know that you tell us, if you act in a certain way, you'll receive my blessing. Father, I pray for all my brothers and my sisters and myself that we will act in a certain way so that we can be even more blessed by you. Amen. Amen. So, God bless you. as we close and we're going to sing another Christmas song that, another song that we can sing all year round Oh come let us adore him Amen